First thing we're going to do is find the selection software. So you're going to go to wheelousa.com and up in the top right hand corner, you'll see an area marked selection software. We'll click on that. It's going to take you to a sign in screen. It's possible you may not have an account. In order to get an account, you should reach out to Wheelow's Applications Engineering Department or your regional sales manager. You can also continue as a guest. I wouldn't recommend this as you will have some restricted functionality. You won't be able to configure boosters or see any pricing. So once we've logged in, this is what our dashboard looks like. You'll see at the top. There's an area for you to view projects. You can view any customers that you've added into the software. Directly below it is the most commonly used area. Uh, that's going to be where you can uh, do your quick select. So you click here for select equipment uh, and we'll go there in a second. There's some areas where you have existing projects saved and a little dashboard here. And then over on the right hand side, you can click on create new and you can create a project from here. I would recommend doing that if you know you're gonna have multiple boosters on one project so you can have them all saved in one place. So for right now, we'll do select equipment for our quick select, and then we can do either simplex boosters here, so one pump, or we can do a multi-pump system, two to four pumps. So we'll click on the multi-pump system. This is what our quick select home screen looks like. So you can see in the center, we have inputs, and then on the right side, we have the product lines to choose from. We'll start out at the top. There's options for quantity of pumps and then how those pumps are split for flow. So on the duplex, you can do 50% per pump. So both pumps are needed to hit primary duty, uh, or you can do one pump at 100% of duty with one standby. And it's the same thing for triplex, you can choose 33%. So three pumps are required to hit duty, or you can have two pumps required for the duty. So each can handle 50% with one standby. There's system suction type. You're gonna have an option for boost, which will have a city pressure coming in and it'll calculate your differential pressure. You'll have an option for flooded suction if you're pulling from a tank, possibly in a municipal application. And there'll also be an option for uh, HVAC. So in this example, we'll do 300 gallons a minute. We'll do a boost application. We will do a duplex with 50% flow split, and we will set our discharge pressure set point at 80 PSI. And then we will set the suction pressure at 20 PSI. It is important to note down below, there are some options. And the only option I would really use down here would be to change the temperature. As you change the temperature of the water, the program will calculate density and it could potentially require uh, a larger motor if your density changes. And then over here on the right, we have product lines to choose from. So initially, as you're getting started with booster selection, I would just encourage you to check all the boxes. So you can just click select all and then we can search from there. For uh, this demonstration, I'm just going to go ahead and select one to make things e easier and straightforward for the training. So we're going to select our Wheelo Cohelix. And then you would click up here on the search. So these are our results. First thing to note is that there's a sort by field up here at the top. The default sort for this is going to be, for most of you, it's going to sort by efficiency which for pumps would be good for boosters, not necessarily. And I'll show you why that's the case. So we have at the top, our CO2 Helix V190-3. It has the best rated horsepower, the best efficiency, but it is hitting the primary duty condition at 2,500 RPM roughly. So if we change this to sorting by driver horsepower up at the top, we'll notice that V190-3 is no longer even on this list. So we'll actually expand the results and we have it down here. It was actually on the second page. So, and we'll see why. So now we have the CO2 Helix V190-2. It is hitting the primary duty condition at 3381 RPM. The pump efficiency is actually 69%, so slightly less efficient. Rated horsepower is similar, but if we go over here to the right, we'll see a column called minimum recommended motor rating. So this booster is 10 horsepower. If we go back down to the original selection that was sorted by efficiency, that was actually a 20 horsepower motor running at very reduced speed, very efficient, but you're gonna cost yourself out of any job. So we have competition and no one on this particular duty condition, 300 gallons a minute is going to be quoting a 20 horsepower motor. 
So this, this is a better selection with a 10 horsepower motor. We're going to have smaller motor, smaller manifolds, and overall a better cost on the system. The second sorting field that I always use is percentage of BEP. So this CO2 Helix V190-2 is actually right at 100% of BEP. That's perfect. So that means that's where the pump is designed to run. You're going to have overall smoother flow through the pump. There'll be less vibration and the life expectancy of the pump, the bearings in the motor, the mechanical seal are all going to be longer when you're closer to BEP. If you have a selection that is between 70 and 120% of BEP, that's also fine. That's what we would call the preferred operating region. And that's kind of where you want to be for pumps or booster systems. So we're going to go ahead and select this booster at the top. It has the smallest motor possible. It's very efficient still. It's operating close to full speed. So we know we have the smallest manifold, smallest motor possible. So we'll left click here and it's going to take us into the main selection screen. Over here on the left, we have our curve, which is the screen it starts us. It shows single pump and two pump operation. We have an overview, which is just going to give basic features for the booster. We have performance, so that's going to give you rate, rated horsepower. It's going to give you RPM that we're running at, a pump efficiency, number of stages of the pumps, that kind of information. We have our configuration and pricing tab, which we'll get to here in a second, where you can choose your voltage and all your options. And then we have our documents. So this is going to help you generate a submittal and within you know five minutes be able to quickly submit on a project if you get a request from a customer. So the next thing we're going to look at is the configuration tab. So you'll see here at the top we have the first area is going to be the voltage. So you can choose your voltage. There's options here for three phase 208, three phase 460, and then three phase 575 volt. If the booster is smaller, you're going to also see single phase options available. There is an area over here to the right called the pressure strategy. Always leave that at maximum pressure, and that's just going to make sure that the system is designed for the pump running at shutoff. As we continue to go down, there are some additional fields for installation elevation and ambient temperature. The, these fields are not doing any calculations in the program, so this is more for information only. If you're in the Rocky Mountains and, you know, you have a higher elevation, you can show that and it will show on your documents. We're not going to be upsizing any motors or providing anything custom based on you changing the elevation. Now we're going to review the rest of the documents. The first document up here at the top is going to be our performance data sheet. So we'll take a look at what's included in this. So we're going to have our operating conditions, our performance criteria at the rated speed of 3381 RPM. We need to hit this operating condition. We have our uh, liquid at 68 degrees Fahrenheit, which can be changed in the selector, and that will change the density of the liquid if you do change it. So it could potentially affect motor size. And then we have our dryer, driver power and data over here, which will show us our rated horsepower, the max horsepower, and the overall motor size on this system. We also have horsepower shown below, our performance in flow and head, and then we do list our NPSH values. So the next document is going to be the multi-speed landscape curve. So this is what it's going to look like, and it's going to show us our various operating points at reduced speed. Uh, it's shown in RPM, but we do have the option to go in here in the quick select and change this to frequency. If you are dealing with a customer that is uh, electrical in nature, or is just concerned about, you know, are we running at 60 hertz? Are we running at 50 hertz? We can uh, depict these various uh, variable speed curves in frequency as well, which is kind of nice. The next three documents are going to be pricing sheets. So we have an internal price sheet, which is going to be for our distributors to show you what your multiplier is times list in order to get your net pricing. We also have a customer price sheet and a customer price sheet with details. I already showed you this customer price sheet with details. The only difference in, in the customer price sheet without the details is going to be that it shows you a total list price and it doesn't have the breakdown with all the article numbers and all the itemized pricing. So it's a cleaner way to look at what your total list price would be for that booster. With the next two documents, we're going to get into our drawings. So we have a document called the general arrangement drawing and then we have a document called the submittal document. So I'll click on the general arrangement drawing. These general arrangement drawings work really well for our individual pumps that we sell. They have a lot of detail for the boosters. There's really not that much detail. It's giving us our overall dimensions. It's giving us horsepower, voltage, 
flow head, and then it also gives us the manifold size. Uh, the The drawing is very small. This is not a very clean look. So I would advise you just to not use this drawing when you're selecting boosters. This is not a document that looks great. We do have a document that looks great, which is our submittal data sheet. So we'll click on here. There's a lot of different information included, materials of construction, motor data. The, we talk about the PLC, we talk about the panel, we have our performance curve shown, and then we have a great general arrangement drawing. So we get down here, it's gonna give you your total system weight, manifold size, full load amps at different voltages, maximum pressure, everything you're possibly gonna need to submit on. So this is the document, if you're submitting a drawing, I would use that's called our submittal document. The next document we have here is the brochure. We're gonna skip that for now. It just basically covers all of our boosters and it's a general brochure that you can use for selling. I'm gonna get into the website in a little bit and we'll kind of cover another location where you can find this document. It's not something I would typically send with a submittal. So then we'll get into the specification. The specification is just a full written specification for this product line. We're gonna cover materials of construction, components for the base assembly, pumps. We're gonna get into the mechanical seals, the motors, control panel, the PLC. It's got everything in here you'll need to work with an engineer on our written specifications. The next document we're gonna cover is the takeoff sheet. So this is an important document. This is gonna be required for when you do submit a purchase order. We're gonna require this along with it as well. And it's gonna have some important information. You're gonna need to confirm your model number just to make sure we don't make a mistake. Some of these pumps have similar model numbers and they may have a difference in stage or horsepower. So we need to make sure we've got the right pump. And then oftentimes we'll have projects where someone reaches out with limited information. I may have quoted it last June. We thought it was 230 volt and it turns out that it's 460 volts. So by having this document, it allows you to go back to your customer, confirm that power supply because that's not something that's modifiable in the field or at least it's not very easy to modify in the field without having some expertise in control panels and how to change the fusing, you're most likely gonna need a new control panel. And then we're asking for maximum flow, minimum flow, different pressures, your set point. And this document will follow your booster all the way through the order entry process. And it goes out to the test lab. So we can actually test your booster to your job conditions. And then this sheet will get signed off on and just ensure that everything is per your specifications. The last document we have here is the installation and operations manual. So we'll take a quick look at this. It's pretty straightforward. It's gonna give you everything you need to know about installing and operating the booster. We have some simple diagrams that show you the components, various components of the booster, where to set the tank pressure. If you do use a pressure tank, we've got some wiring schematics for the control panel in here. We've also take you through the screens, right? How do you start the pumps? How do you test the pumps? How do you set alarms? So that's all in here. And then one of the most important parts is we do have a troubleshooting guide at the end. So if you do have any issues on startup, you can kind of reference this guide and it'll tell you the cause of the issue and maybe what the remedy is. So we've thought this through, it's a great document. And now we've got our submittal document completed. So how do we download it? So you're gonna basically go through and just select any of the documents that you want. There's two ways to do it right here at the bottom. You can either generate a PDF, which is going to include all of these documents in one long PDF, or you can generate a zip file. So sometimes that's nice because you can itemize all the documents in PDF and then keep the price sheet separate, which you may not want to send to your customer. So now that we're done just showing you the documents, we'll go back to the dashboard here and we'll size a booster a different way. We'll go to a project and we'll just assume this is a project that we're gonna add multiple boosters to. In this case, we'll only, uh, we'll only do one. We'll do project one, two, three, four, five. Project status open. And then save. So this is gonna be your basic uh, project information overview. And then all you'd really do is just come up here on the right hand side at the top and you're going to click new item. And then we're going to go into this time we'll do a, a select pumps and simplex system. And we'll do a quick little sizing on a simplex system. So uh, we'll just do 30 gallons a minute and we'll do 80 PSI. And then we will select the Helix Excel complete. This is our ECM simplex booster pump version. We'll click search and then same thing. So it's given us a bunch of different options. It's sorting by efficiency. 
So we'll see it's the Helix V50-10. So we'll change it to driver horsepower. And now we've just gone down in size and now we're at a, a Helix V30-6. So if there's one takeaway, definitely sort by driver horsepower. So that gets us down to a three horse. Uh, and then we'll go in here. We'll configure in price. So everything, we'll do standard features. And then basically all we're going to do up here on the right-hand corner is we're going to click save. It's thinking. Usually it takes a few seconds. So that is saved this project. So now that we're done with our selection and kind of reviewing the, the selection software, we're going to go back to the website and we do have some additional submittal information and also marketing materials available. So we would go to wheelousa.com again, and we'll go under products. There are three tabs depending on market. We're going to have building services, commercial, water management, so our municipal friends, and then industrial. Each one has water distribution and boosting listed. It's any of those links will take you to the same product homepage. So we're gonna click on water distribution and boosting, and we're gonna go into all of our products here are listed that we sell into that market. We'll go into the Wii Booster, for example, and we have different options available. We have advantages to you, which is just going over the features and benefits of the system. We have a series description, which just kind of covers some of the general specifications for the booster. And it has a nice family curve showing you the range of the booster. Then we have some additional documents here available. So we have the IONM. We have an engineering specification, which we covered. We have our brochure available here. And then we also have our certification. So we have our UL package system certification available and then our NSF certification. Then farther down, we have our submittal documents that were also located in the software. We have our takeoff sheet, which I reviewed. And then we do have some additional booster submittal forms for more in-depth submittals. So this is what that document will look like. And as we go through the table of contents, we have certifications, the scope of the equipment. We have a mechanical section, an electrical section that covers the control panel, the PLCs, the VFDs, and then all the instrumentation and cut sheets that are going to go on these boosters. So we'll just kind of scroll through here. So this will need to be marked up per project because uh, it is a general submittal. So we can work with applications engineering on the Wheelow side and we'll help you go through this for any in-depth projects where you're gonna need a submittal with all this detail. So what if we need 3D drawings for the booster? You'd go to this last tab called product selection. And basically we'd take the booster we just selected in the software and we can either search by article number here or we can narrow it down by the number of pumps and the manifold size. You'd find the associated booster you just selected, click on it. And then we'd go over to here to this area, BIM CAD, and we're gonna have step files available for each booster. There currently is no other file formats, but we can help you with other file formats upon request. Just give us a couple of days. We can help you with Revit or other files. And then the only other document that I think you all might need would be our warranty information. So you'd go back to the website, scroll to the top, and there's an area up here, service and support, and then you'll go down to warranties. So this has the various different warranties. So the warranty for the booster, since it is primarily a building services product, although we sell it into other markets, you'd go into the building services warranty click on this PDF and it's going to take you to our warranty information and what's covered under the warranty. So this might be the last document you might need to fill out a submittal for your customers. So we've got a really good track record of not having warranty claims on our boosters, but if there was ever a warranty to arise, we'll cover where you would go and make a claim. So the same area would be service and support. And then you'd go down here to the area, submit a claim, and it's going to take you to the Wheelow Warranty Claim website, which is wheelowwarranty.com. You need your order information, your original order number. You can go into this claim, put a description of the issue, and you can actually attach pictures. Someone will then reach out to you with a disposition or any questions, and then you can track the claim, any parts that we might be shipping to you, anything like that within this warranty claim software. So it's really, really nice to use.